Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Today we are going to talk about the dynamic response of DC-DC converters and their hysteretic control. So this is the outline of this presentation. We will see an introduction. We will talk about the dynamic model of hysteretic control. We will show some QSPICE simulation results. And finally, we will compare the hysteretic control with the peak current mode control that we have seen in previous videos. So here we have several interesting videos related with this topic. Power electronics number 70, solving difference equations. Power electronics number 71, improved dynamic model of current mode control DC-DC converters. Number 72, improved dynamic model of voltage mode controlled DC-DC converters. And number 73, effect of loop delay in voltage mode controlled DC-DC converters. So if you have not seen these videos yet, please do so because they are really interesting and related to this topic of today. So here we have the back converter operating under hysteretic control. What we are doing here is to measure the current through the inductor and compare this current with two values, the peak value and the value value, and generating the gate signal from this hysteretic comparator. We have seen this in this previous video, LTS by number 13 where we studied how to create a hysteresis controller for LTSPICE. So here we have the waveforms, the current through the inductor goes between the valley value and the peak value. So when the current goes up and goes beyond the peak value, the switch is turned off. So the current through the inductor is decreasing. And when this current is a little bit lower than IV, then the switch is turned on again, so the current is going to increase again. So with this, we can control the current through the inductor, the average value of this current, which is the blue dashed line here. And of course, this average value is equal to the peak value of the current plus the value, value divided by 2. And with this average value, we can know also the output voltage, the DC output voltage of the converter, which is the average current through the inductor times the resistance of the load. So this is a very simple methodology to control a DC-DC converter. Very interesting. So today we are going to focus on the dynamic behavior of this control method. And also we are going to compare the dynamic behavior of this control method with other control methods as the peak current mode control that we have seen in previous videos. Before going into the details of the dynamic behavior, let's see how we are going to implement the hysteretic control using QSPICE. So here we have the hysteresis comparator using two comparators and a flip-flop. So the comparators are comparing with the peak value and with the valley value and activating the set and reset of the SR flip-flop. So here we are injecting the average value that we want through the inductor and this is a parameter that corresponds to the ripple of the current. So as we can see it's very easy. The peak value is the average value plus the ripple and the valley value is the average value minus the ripple. So this is going to generate the PWN signal for the switch here. And here we have the back converter that we have used in other examples. So on the right we have the waveforms, we have the peak value in green, the valley value in blue, and then in red we have the current through the inductor. So we are reaching a steady state and then getting a switching frequency of around 78 kHz. Here we can see the PWM signal for the switch and this is the output voltage to reach an output voltage value of 5 volts. Let's now talk about dynamic behavior of this control method. As we have seen in previous videos, if we do a perturbation on the current itself, which is the natural response, 
then in this case we will see that the current is going to increase and reaching the peak value the switch is turned off so the current is decreasing until reaching the valley value and then from this point we are again between the limits so the perturbation has been corrected but the difference with other control methods is that now we have a variable switching period so this is the period before the perturbation and this is the switching period after the perturbation the switching period has increased so now we are not sampling the current through the inductor once per switching period now the switching period behaves more like an analog variable that we can adjust as desired in order to correct the error that we have in the current. So we have the following conclusions here. Any perturbation on the current is compensated in less than one switching period. We have variable switching frequency, so this behaves more like analog control. We cannot consider this as sampled a discrete system because the switching period is variable. So the characteristic of a sampling system is lost and therefore we cannot apply the same procedure as in voltage mode control or current mode control where the switching frequency was constant. Let's study now the fourth response. What happens when we do a step transient on the reference, on the average current that we want through the inductor? So if we increase here, for example, this current, immediately the peak value and the value value are going to increase also. So we have this band now for the current. So the current is going to increase, reaching the peak value then decrease, reaches the valley value, and then we are inside the limits again. So we have the average value that we want very quickly in less than one switching period. But the, the issue here is the, that the switching period is variable. So if this value, the average value, is very high and then the peak value is going to be very high so this is going to increase until the necessary value and then decrease again so both t on and t off times are variable so they behave like an analog variable we can have in principle any values for them and also for the addition which is the switching period so the conclusion from my point of view is that hysteretic control is like an analog control if we have a small ripple in the current so ip and iv are similar then we can do the following approximation at any instant the current through the inductor is going to be approximately equal to the average current that we are injecting into the system and therefore also in a small signal the changes in the average current of the inductor are going to be approximately equal to the changes in the average current that we are injecting into the system so the transfer function that relates our input signal the average current that we want and the output signal which is the actual average current through the inductor is equal to one however this approximation is only valid up to the nyquist frequency which is the which is half of the switching frequency at the operating point because of course we are still sending energy from the input to the output at given intervals during the t on time and during the t of time so we cannot have a dynamic higher than this value so we have uh, always the limit of the nyquist frequency let's investigate this a little bit doing a q spice simulation here we have the circuit in q spice that we have seen previously but now we are superposing here to the uh, voltage source that we have here to inject the average current another voltage source which is sinusoidal with a peak value of 0 0.2 volts and 5 kilohertz and starting after 200 microseconds 
So this is to see how the perturbation that we are including in the average current is going to affect here at the current through the inductor and also at the output voltage. So let's run the simulation. And here we can see the results. So we are injecting the perturbation at 5 kilohertz. So this is in a steady state, the current through the inductor. And now we can see how the current through the inductor follows perfectly well the perturbation that we are adding into the average current and also uh, to the peak value and the valley value. We can try now to increase the frequency of the perturbation, maybe to 10 kilohertz. So we can see that still the average current through the inductor follows well the average current. Remember that the switching frequency here was around 80 kilohertz, so the Nyquist frequency is approximately 40 kilohertz. So let's try, for example, here 20 kilohertz. So we can see that more or less the current is still following the average value. Let's try a value equal to the Nyquist frequency, 40 kilohertz approximately. So now we can see that we are starting to have something like an aliasing effect with the current through the inductor should go this way but instead we have this waveform that is not following well the average value that we expect. So this is a demonstration that of course we cannot get close to the Nyquist frequency because otherwise the uh, system is not following well the reference that we want even if we can increase here maybe up to 80 kilohertz and run again then we can see again that the behavior is completely different that we expect. Our converter is not fast enough to follow these changes. So now we are going to study the dynamic response of the back converter under hysteretic control. We have seen in previous video this one, power electronics number 3, ultra-fast modeling of DC-DC converters in continuous conduction mode, we obtained this equivalent circuit and from it we can obtain the dynamic response of the output voltage versus the current through the inductor and we get this final transfer function. We also study this in this video, number 37, simple dynamic modeling of current mode control DC-DC converters. But now we are going to control this average current through the inductor with our input average current that we are injecting into the uh, hysteretic comparator. And here we have the example that we are studying. We have used this circuit before in other videos. It's a back converter, 12 volts at the input and 5 volts at the output. And we have here the different values that we have seen. This is the response of the output voltage versus the average current through the inductor. And then the equivalent model that we have at the end from the average current that we are injecting here into the comparator to the output voltage it's equal at the end to the transfer function g sub c so for this particular case we have this expression and we can do the plotting and we have this response for the magnitude and for the phase but again this is going to be only valid until the Nyquist frequency which is the switching frequency at the steady state operating point divided by 2 and in our case is around 40 kHz, 39 kHz. So this is the circuit to obtain the dynamic response of this back converter and the hysteretic control we have seen how to do this many times. We are injecting here a perturbation 
and then with all these statements we are obtaining the dynamic response, the frequency response of the converter. And here we have the average circuit for comparison, so we are simulating also the converter in ideal behavior without switching, so this should be equal to the dynamic response that we have seen in previous slide. Remember that all these circuits are going to be available at the repository of this channel on GitHub. Here is the link, so you can download these files and try them by yourself. And here are the simulation results. At the top we have the magnitude of the actual response and the average response and below is the phase. So here in green we have the magnitude of the average circuit without switching and in red we have the response corresponding to the actual circuit and below in blue we have the response of the average circuit and in green the response of the actual circuit. So we can see that now both responses are pretty much the same until the Nyquist frequency, which is around 39 kilohertz in this case. So this means that hysteretic control is a very fast control. It almost follows the ideal behavior up to Nyquist frequency. We have here a small difference, but in principle is very, very similar. And here we have a comparison of the peak current mode control that we have seen in this previous video, number 71 of the same back converter and with hysteretic control. So we can see how here below the Nyquist frequency the phase of the response is decreasing much quicker compared with the ideal behavior of the converter. However, using hysteretic control the phase of the response remains the same, almost the same, up to the Nyquist frequency. So this means that using hysteretic control we can design the feedback loop with a higher bandwidth. So the converter is going to be faster in comparison with the peak current mode control or even with the voltage mode control in which we have the same effect of the decreasing of the phase in the dynamic response. The price that we have to pay using hysteretic control is that we have not the switching frequency under control. So the switching frequency is going to change and if we want to compensate the perturbations in a wide range then we are going to have also a wide range of change in the switching frequency and this can be more difficult for the design of the converter, especially for the design of the inductor that has to operate in a wider uh, frequency range. Well, with this we get to the end of this presentation today. I hope that you find this information useful. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.